come with me to the John Holmes Mass Spectrometry Facility, which is housed in room 124, the Oriel Hall at the University of Ottawa, Canada. I am Sharon Curtis, the manager. This video will enable you to wander around the facility, view the different instruments we house and familiarize yourself with how they work. You can now do this at your own pace and rerun any sections that you're unsure of. This is John Holmes who opened the first mass spec facility in the spring of 1964 when the Department of Chemistry was awarded a grant for $56,000 by the NRC, the Research Grant Giving Agency of Canada at that time. John took responsibility for choosing, operating and maintaining the instrument as no other professor volunteered their services. And in November of 1964, the Perkin Elmer RMU 60 single focusing magnetic sextant instrument was installed. A more substantial historical view can be found on the facility's website. John stands before the present day Craters Concept Magnetic Sector Mass Spectrometer. All a mass spectrometer is, in essence, is a very expensive weighing machine. It does not, however, weigh grams of stuff or milligrams of stuff, it weighs atoms and molecules. And to be able to do this, we first have to remove all the air from the inside of the experiment. Otherwise, all we would weigh is air. Oxygen weighing 32 Dalton, nitrogen weighing 28 Dalton. And to do this, we must employ vacuum pumps. The first pump used is the rotary pump and sometimes called the roughing pump because it gets us down to just a rough vacuum or a backing pump because it backs up our better vacuum pumps. Here are three rotary pumps. The rotary pump. It removes the gas by positive displacement. It is a mechanical pump with moving vanes and a rotor which expel the gas. Vacuum is achieved around a 10 to the minus three millibar, which is good for the rough vacuum or for large gas loads. Oil in the pump, however, can produce some problems. These rotary pumps can be seen to be backing up a diffusion pump and the diffusion pump is used to get depth to a much higher vacuum, 10 to the minus 7 millibars and beyond. It works by heating to boiling point a very expensive low pressure oil. This oil passes through nozzles picking up air molecules and these condense on the cool walls of the pump where they are removed by the backing pump. The advantages of this particular diffusion pump is it's very inexpensive, it can reach high vacuums of 10 to the minus 10 millibar in some cases, and it's really easy to maintain. However, there are disadvantages. It has a very slow start-up and shut-down procedure because of the cooling and, and boiling of the oil, and the oil can contaminate high vacuum regions. As we pull back, you can see just how gigantic this experiment is. Modern day instruments, however, are much smaller and can fit on, on top of a desktop. Diffusion pumps can be relatively large and consequently mass spectrometers were also large. The advent, however, of the molecular turbo pump has meant the mass spectrometers have decreased in size. Here is a molecular turbo pump. Look how we can compare it to the size of the diffusion pump. As we move around the lab, you can see in this space where we previously had uh, one large instrument, we are able to accommodate now four instruments. In fact, in this region, there is two GCMSs, a Waters Triple Quad and a Bruca Moldy. This benchtop Waters Electrospray Triple Quad Mass Spectrometer reaches of a vacuum below 10 to the minus 7 by the use of a molecular turbo pump. Molecular turbo pumps have largely replaced diffusion pumps in the vacuum technology industry. Uh, their main advantage being that they have this fast startup and shutdown speeds. There's no hot oil to heat up or cool down or contaminate the vacuum system. They are, however, a lot more expensive and have a limited life expectancy compared to that of a diffusion pump. Inside the pump are a series of rotors which push the gas molecules away from the, the vacuum region towards the backing pump. The large surface area of the rotors, usually in the form of discs and stationary start starter blades, interlock, creating spaces that move the gas away from the vacuum into the roughing pump. Please watch the following video, which um, illustrates how the gases move through the molecular turbo pump very well. It is necessary to know the pressure within your vacuum system and at various places within the instrument. 
And to do this, most bench benchtop mass spectrometers use two types of gauges. One, a Piranium gauge, which measures your rough vacuum or backing pressure, and this will go down to about 10 to the minus 3. And then the Penning gauge, which measures your medium to high vacuum, uh, 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 7 millibar. A Piranium gauge works by a filament which carries a current and a heat sensor, which me measures thermal and radiative heat. The voltage or current is regulated to keep the temperature of the fil filament constant. As the vacuum system improves, less gas touches the filament and less current is needed to regulate the temperature of the filament. These changes in current are calibrated in the factory to correspond to different pressure readings. The Pirani gauge responds to pressure changes very fast. The Penning gauge works at pressures below 10 to the minus 2 millibar. It contains an anode and a cathode between which an electric discharge of 2 kilovolts is maintained. Gases colliding with this discharge produce electrons which move to the anode or cathode depending on their charge. This is attenuated by the presence of a magnet. The amount of electrons created is directly proportional to the gas pressure and the discharge current is converted to a pressure reading at a meter. Major advantages of this gauge is its insensitivity to contaminants, so it needs little to no maintenance. In most modern mass spectrometers, the pressure readings at various points along the instrument can be read in the software. It's very important to know where to find these readings. Each manufacturer uses different software and some hide this information for some cunning reason. In older instruments, the, the gauges were however connected to pressure meters. In this Waters instrument, there are two gauges, a Pirani and a Penning. The Pirani is located in the middle quadrupole, the gas cell, and shows a pressure less than 10 to the minus 4 millibar. This is illustrated in words and colour. Green means good vacuum, red bad. Argon gas is added to the gas cell during an MSMS experiment, raising the pressure to above 10 to the minus 3 millibar. It is important to know the pressure in this region for that purpose. The other very important region to know the pressure of is of course the detector region. This should be as low a pressure as possible to help with sensitivity of the instrument. This instrument measure, measures a pressure of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 6 millibars. Many mass spectrometers, especially electrospray mass spectrometers and GCMS mass spectrometers, uh, you also use uh, gases, uh, nitrogen, helium, argon and hydrogen in some cases and these gases are generally supplied from cylinders. These cylinders are under high pressure and the gases need to be controlled by gauges and contained within tubing suitable for this high pressure. Please watch this video as a caution to how dangerous cylinder handling can be. A regulator attached to the gas cylinder allows you to monitor the pressure inside the cylinder and also regulate the pressure of gas leaving the cylinder. This gauge measures how much pressure a gas remains in the cylinder and consequently tells you how full or empty the cylinder is. This gauge measures the pressure of the gas leaving the cylinder. For most electrospray instruments that's normally about 70 psi. Tubing able to withstand high pressures takes the gas to the instrument. The knob in the centre of the gauges adjusts to regulate the pressure of the gas leaving the cylinder. Clockwise increases the pressure. Gases to the instruments can also be supplied by a nitrogen generator or one of these large liquid nitrogen containers. Most modern mass spectrometers possess these push and pull connectors on the high pressure gas lines. They can be removed when the gas is off by pushing the blue end piece towards the back, towards the black centre piece, while simultaneously pulling the tubing out in the opposite direction. Each manufacturer has their own brand of software for each instrument. Here you can see the voltages associated with the source, the detector voltages and the source temperature controls. Adjusting the source voltages and temperatures and also adjusting gas pressures are all parameters that will need to be optimised to produce the best ionising conditions for individual molecules. 